Greetings. Today we're going to talk about Apple Wireless Direct Link Protocol and specifically how you can capture packets on an M1 computer running Mac OS Monterey. First things first, open up the Wireless Diagnostics application from Spotlight and then go to the file menu and choose sniffer and from here we're going to ch choose a channel in this case it's channel 40 and we're going to open up that width all the way up to 80 megahertz authenticate and then we'll start our packet capture for channel 40 so what's happening now is our Wi-Fi rainbow is showing our channel and it's just capturing packets for us so we're using this application as our packet capture device. If you try and capture wireless local area network uh, packets with just Wireshark natively on Mac OS Monterey, it won't work. So this is the way you get that data. And the reason I'm choosing channel 40 is because there are four channels that Mac uses or Apple uses for their AWDL, Apple Wireless Direct Link Protocol, and those are channel 6, channel 40, channel 149, and channel 153. Okay, so we've stopped that and we can see that this file is saved to the var forward slash tmp directory. We're going to open up this file with an application called Wireshark Network Protocol Analyzer. It's an open source application and I'm running version 3.6.1 in this tutorial. There's a lot of information you can see and there's some information you can't see within this type of packet capture. What we're going to focus on today is the signal to noise ratio within these packet captures. The reason we're looking at that is because it's gonna let us know how strong the signal is that's being emitted from the Apple devices and we can compare that to the signals that are being emitted from our wireless access points and see which ones are stronger. That will help us gauge if there's an interference problem on these specific channels within our network environment. One question we want to answer is, does it make sense to turn off channels 149 and 153 on our wireless access points and just let Apple take those for their devices? Apple uses those channels to send data from a screen to an Apple TV or from a screen to a sidecar application and within their airdrop protocol amongst other things. On this channel specifically, when we look at the protocols that have the highest signal to noise ratio, we're not seeing a lot of those AWDL packets. The protocol we see is this 802.11 protocol. So Apple's not broadcasting that much on this channel 40. Now let's open another packet capture report that we took on channel 149 and see how the data compares. So we're going to look at the same two parameters, our protocol and our noise to signal ratio. So now that we've filtered the data set of data packets so that the ones with the highest signal to noise ratio show up at the top of the list and the ones with the lowest show up at the bottom of the list, we can see that the ones with the highest strength on channel 149 are all AWDL packets. The wireless local area network is made up of ruckus wireless access points and if they were broadcasting 
at a higher signal to noise ratio on channel 149 than the Apple products, we would see that in this list. But in this case, it's pretty clear that the Apple products have the strongest signal for this data set. And a little bit about the area where I took it. There's about five iPads and two Apple computers within a few feet of the computer that did the packet capture. There isn't an Apple TV anywhere near though. Um, the closest Apple TV is about five meters away and in a different building. All right, so we've looked at channel 40 and looked at channel 149. Now let's look at channel 153. We're going to do the same thing. Stack the data set so that the signal to noise ratio is highest at the top and lowest at the bottom. And once again, we can see the protocol with the highest signal to noise ratio is our AWDL packets. That's an indicator that the Apple products are broadcasting the strongest signal in the area on this frequency. Therefore, the Ruckus wireless access points are broadcasting at a lower signal noise to ratio on channel 153. They are broadcasting though, the channel is not turned off, it is turned on for all our access points. Which is pretty interesting because perhaps the access point has software on it, you know, we're reverse engineering here. I'm thinking that the access point has software on it that just lets Apple win. You know, it's a, it, it, it sees that Apple has the stronger signal, so it broadcasts on other channels and other frequencies and just lets Apple have 153. I'm gonna go on a quick tangent here where we talk about this filtered MAC address. So we filtered the data set so we can stack all the packets that have this specific MAC address. The reason is, is this MAC address is different than the one engraved on the network card. It's different than the one we see in when we run IF config. And that's because within Apple's platform security, under their Wi-Fi privacy guide, they acknowledge that they use MAC address randomization. In general, the Apple products that were manufactured after 2017 or later all are capable of doing this. So Apple's generating randomized MAC addresses for the peer-to-peer Wi-Fi connections that are used for AirDrop and AirPlay. That's basically a direct quote from the Apple documentation. In short, Apple uses random MAC addresses for these AWDL protocols, and that's what we're seeing here in this filter set. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is highlight a good chunk of these packets, copy them as plain text, and then paste them into a Google spreadsheet so that we can compare and contrast the differences in the data sets across the four channels we're examining. Channel six, channel 40, channel 149, and channel 153. Okay, now that we have channel 153 data in our spreadsheet, let's open up channel 149 data in Wireshark once again. We'll stack it based on our signal to noise ratio, highlight a good chunk of the packets, copy them as plain text and paste them into our spreadsheet. Now that that data has been copied over, we can move forward with one more packet capture from channel six. So we've done 
153, 149, and 40. So that leaves one more channel that Apple uses for their Apple Wireless Direct Link Protocol to capture packets on and examine. Okay, here we go. Wireless Diagnostics, Sniffer, Channel 6. We're going to open up that band as wide as we can, which for this channel is at 20 megahertz. Authenticate, and now we'll just wait while it sniffs out those packets. So I let the sniffer run for about a minute and a half and then stopped it. I cut that out of this recording because it's not super relevant. And now we're gonna open up that new data set for channel six in Wireshark. You can see the channel number right there. Click open, click okay, stack the data set. When we run to the top of this, we can see a pretty high signal to noise ratio in contrast to the five gigahertz band. And a bit of a tangent, that's one of the reasons why 2.4 gigahertz causes interference on five gigahertz is because of uh, that, you know, almost extra 30 uh, dBs of signal to noise ratio. It's an indicator of a strong, stronger signal strength, which can cause interference. That is one of those reasons that it's pretty common practice for most enterprise network environments to turn off 2.4 gigahertz on their access points in a lot of cases, not all cases, but most cases they do that. Um, sometimes it's left on or you bring in separate Wi-Fi gear to broadcast at 2.4 gigahertz for like say robots that only run on that radio frequency in an Amazon warehouse. So there's a hypothetical uh, application that does get some use. All right, so we pasted our data into our spreadsheet and now we have four tabs in this spreadsheet that have data from each one of these channels, 6, 40, 149, and 153. I'm gonna add rows above and count the packets captured that match the AWDL protocol so that we can compare which channels have the most number of these packets. Now that we've run our count if AWDL packets across our four channels we examined here. We can see that channel 153 has the highest density of packets at the highest noise to signal ratio um, of the four channels. 149 is second, number 40 is zero, and number six is uh, in third place. All right, let's conclude this screencast by just recapping some of the things we covered. We talked about how you could use Max sniffer software to capture packets that are broadcast over wireless local area networks, and then how we can use Wireshark to examine how strong the signal is on those specific packets that have protocol IDs on them. In this case, they're AWDL for the Apple protocols and 802.11 for a lot of the Ruckus protocols. We would stack these based on their signal to noise ratio in dBs. What we found was that that channel 149 and 153 had the highest quantity of Apple wireless direct link packets with the highest amount of signal to noise ratio. Separate from those findings, within our broader wireless local area network, we're not noticing any problems with interference on these channels. So it looks like that the ruckus access points are choosing to let Apple win 
and just have those channels freely because we haven't turned off channels 49 or 153 on our access points. Uh, we do have the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum turned off on the majority of our access points. So Apple has free reign over those as well. And with our data set, we didn't see too much of Apple using those anyway. In any case, that's all I got on this project for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you around.